Hello and welcome to this edition of the IUPSC nomenclature videos. In this video, as you can see, we're going to talk about cyclic ketones. Cyclic ketones where the ketone happens to be in a ring. So when a ketone happens to be in a ring, we are going to name it as cycloalkane and remove the E alkanone and automatically this is considered to be the first carbon so we don't have to mention the position of the double bond O group the carbonyl group if this is the functional group that has the highest priority in it so let's check out the rules cyclic ketones the carbonyl group is assigned position number one and this number is not included in the name unless more than one carbonyl group is present the rest of the ring is numbered to give substituents the lowest possible location numbers and of course we add the prefix cyclo to it. And as you as I've already mentioned, we remove the E of the ending of the alkane and replace it with own. And when you have more than one carbonyl group present in a cyclic ring, it's called a dione, a trione, which in which case the name would become cyclo alkane p q dione where p and q represent the position of the carbonyl carbons in the ring so let's see some examples pause the video name it and play it back now as you can see it's a five membered ring cyclopentane we have a double bond o no other substituents no need to do the numbering it's cyclopentanone if you look at this one, pause, write the name and play it back. This is the carbonyl carbon, this will automatically get 1. And I am going to make sure that this one gets 2 because the substituent should get the lowest number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the prefix is 2-bromo and the parent is cyclopentanone. Again, no need to mention 1. Let's see some other examples. Try this one. Pause, write the name and play it back. Obviously, the carbonyl carbon gets precedence over the alpha carbon of the OH. Ketones have a higher priority in naming than the uh, OH group of alcohols. So, I'm going to start with the carbonyl carbon, and this one ends up getting 4. And we know the prefix of OH is hydroxy. So, this is going to be called 4 hydroxy cyclohexanone. Let's try one more. Now, here, this is 1. Now, should I give the methyl 2 or the bromo 3? Should I do it clockwise numbering or anticlockwise? Obviously, the lowest number must be given to the first substituent, which means we go clockwise. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, it's 5 bromo 2 methyl cyclohexanone. Try this one. Now both the carbonyl carbons, either of them can be taken as 1. The other would automatically become 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's cyclohexane 1,4-dione. Let's take something which is complicated now. Now this is very interesting. I want you to pause the video now. And uh, number it and name it and try to tell me what the name is and then we will be able to check it in the video. Now, what you need to understand is, these two are the carbonyl carbons. One of them will be given 1, the other will automatically will become 3. Now, the question is, which is 1 and which is 3? So, let's try all possibilities. Suppose I start with this as 1. If this is 1, this will be 2. This will be 3, 4, 5. So, I've got my substituents at positions 3, 4, 5 and I have got 2 in 3, 1 in 4, 2 in 5. Now let's do the other numbering. Let's do the numbering with a different color. Let's use um, the black I guess. Now if I take this as 1, this is 2, 
this is 3, this is 4, this is 5, and this is 6. Then I am getting the first one at 3, and there are two of them. Then I get position number, sorry, not 3, it's 2, I am 4, sorry. This is 4, and um, this is also 4. I think I, think I made a mistake. I made a mistake in the numbering part. Let me get this right. I'm sorry for the mess mistake. I think let's let's get the numbers done again. I think there was a small error here. Suppose I took this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. And let me change the color and bring it back. Uh, let this be 1 now. This be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now let's compare the numberings. Because the first thing to decide which way the numbering goes is the numbering itself. Now in each case, the carbonyl carbons get 1 and 3. So that's not going to be the decider. If you look at the black ones, I get 4. I got 2 substituents sitting on 4. The black numbering and I've got one sitting at five and I've got two sitting at six now if you look at the red numberings numbering using the red ink then I get four two substituents I get five one substituent I have six two substituents. So you see the numbers don't help you. In both cases, I've got 2 at 4, 1 at 5, 2 at 6. So the numberings by themselves don't work. So let's now look at the names. 1, 2, 3, 4. The first is 4, if I do it clockwise. In 4, I've got a methyl. In 4, I've got 1, 2, 3. It's prop 1 enyl. Now let's do the numbering, keeping the other carbonyl carbon as 1. This is 1, this is 2, this is 3, and this is 4. Now I get 4 methyl, and I got bromo. And obviously, the methyls match, and bromo takes precedence over propan enol. So the numbering that we have to select is the one that I've just shown. So the numbering is done this way. And uh, here, we need to understand that we got to uh, ensure that we write the names of the substituents in alphabetical order. But the parent is cyclohexane 1,3-dione. So I got um, 4 bromo, first one, then 5 isopropyl, 4, 6 dimethyl, and then this fellow. 6 propan enol cyclohexane 1 3 dione. This is the name. Alright, so this is the way we're going to name cyclic ketones if the carbonyl carbon forms part of the ring. But what if this carbonyl carbon is outside the ring? Now, if the carbonyl carbon is outside the ring, let's say you have something like this then the parent becomes the acyclic part. This is the parent. It's a two carbon ketone, which otherwise you will never get. So this is going to be ethanone. And you also have a cyclohexyl part. And this is numbered one, two. So it's cyclohexyl ethanone. We don't have to say one cyclohexyl ethanone because in ethanone, the only way you can get it as a ketone is if the cyclohexyl part happens to be on one. So, 
if a ketone group exists outside a ring such that a ring carbon is directly attached to the carbonyl carbon then the ketone is named using the acyclic part as alkanone and this is preceded by naming the ring the names of such ketones are given as one cycloalkyl alkanone so in this particular case again you see this is the parent that's ethanone and with ethanone you don't have to specify a number it's going to be cyclopentyl ethanone try this pause name it and then check for the answer now obviously this is one so if this is one 1 2 3 4 so i got one cyclohexyl 2 3 dimethyl pentanone one cyclohexyl 2 3 dimethyl pentanone now what happens if both become rings that means i got a ring here and i got let's say another ring here now what do i do this is the parent acyclic part since it only one carbon atom ketone it's methanone and these are cycloalkyls so we'll say cycloalkyl cycloalkyl methanone and both cycloalkyls have to be named based on their alphabetical order so if both the groups attached to the carbonyl carbon are rings then the ketone is named as cycloalkyl cycloalkyl methanone the two cycloalkyl groups are named alphabetically so how would you name this one pause uh, name it and then check for the answer this is going to be obviously cyclohexyl cyclopentyl and one carbon ketone methanone so i hope this this video helps you understand the naming of ring ketones where the carbonyl carbon happens to be a part of the ring and also when the carbonyl carbon is just attached to the ring if you have any questions any queries any doubts please leave them in the comment section below and i hope that this video really helps you thank you for watching this video